market. Marker. Fourteen hour days screaming and crying. What have I got myself into? There was a vibe in that house. It always surprises me when it works. <laughs> 18 days, we weren't doing much playing. If we don't scare you with this movie, we fail. Ah! Let's just go with the classic scare. Action. The things that most attracted me about this story were the fact that it did have another level that it was about. You know, I mean, if I'm going to make a genre movie, I don't want to just turn on a chainsaw and go to work. You know, I mean, I want the picture to have some content elements that are interesting to me as a writer, producer, as a storyteller. Hello, Celine. Stay away from me. It's a very complicated script, and the earlier drafts were actually even more complicated before it got rewritten. And um, uh, but. A, vi a visual came into my head that was very exciting, and I stuck with that first initial idea visually. I'm not dead! The film's about the realm between life and death. Celia, who's played by Monica Kina, dies at a frat party. She's given GHP and uh, an overdose of it. Uh, she wakes up and can still hear the frat party, but can't see it, and she's, she's in this house, so the house is like the, uh, you know, the, the medium between, between heaven and hell and life and death and all that. So she's, she's trapped in there trying to fight her way out. Grandpa. And slowly she comes across these figures from her past, her grandfather who's dead. This is not a dream, sir. And she begins to realize early in this movie that, in fact, she has expired. <laughs> Keep your hand there, Monica. I knew that everyone's initial reaction reading it was going to be, we have to do a lot of CG, we have to do a lot of visual effects. I actually thought the opposite. And then we were given a CG budget, which was over $100,000, which was a physical impossibility because there was no way we could make the movie with that kind of budget. So the director came up with basically a plan that was to do it all in camera. Let's give it a very modern, flashy feel, but go a little old school with it. Let's use the camera, let's use the edit, and let's use real makeup effects and use real people. And action. Unfortunately, not enough directors know the camera. Um, so I was a focus puller uh, and a camera operator for about 10 years. He came out of the camera department, so he grew from camera department to uh, being a director, and real has a real passion about the camera and how to use the camera and how to use the camera to tell the story. 50% of the, f the film for me, of the project, is what I'm going to do with the camera, and the other half is the story and the actors. It's always important, I think, to tell a good character story, to care about the people who are in jeopardy. If you look at my old television shows from the Rockford Files and on, you know, A-Team and Wise Guy and 21 Jump Street, they're all, they were all character, the commission, all character-driven dramas. And camera set. I wanted the actress who played this part to have vulnerability, to be somebody who we would care for and, and, and want to protect. I had seen things that Monica had been in before. Um, I talked with her, and the minute I talked to her, um, I knew she's, she's got a really, really tough quality when she needs it. She's absolutely hysterical. If you think I'm opening that door, you're out of your mind. She's like adorably tiny, so immediately you're gonna think that she could be overwhelmed in this situation. And then her stronger qualities can come in as the film goes on, and then you realize that she's tough. So it was just, she was a perfect fit for it. She carries it as an actress. She really has a lot on her shoulders, a lot of emotion from happy, it's your birthday, and then boom, you're dead. You've been raped, you've been killed, and then you got monsters, and you're fighting to not go to hell or whatever that other world is. The role of Celia just like goes through so many different stages, and she has so much strength and weakness and and it's like really a coming of age story in a lot of ways celia is dealing with all of these really intense issues that would be bad okay come in david anders plays donovan who i intentionally wanted to keep a little bit ambiguous come with me i just knew that david's personality would be perfect to get out the enormous amount of information that his character had to spew out and not have the audience start to roll their eyes and go, oh, he's feeding us information. Once your body leaves the sanctuary, your soul goes with it. It turns out that he's an agent of the devil. And, and what 
he has really been doing all these years is cultivating her. He is the king soul eater. He is the absolute person who is the worst of the worst. I don't think we went looking too far beyond David Anders, to be honest with you. Who's there? I love being a bad guy. I think everybody has a, has a dark side, and I, for most of my career, if you can call it that, um, I have got to tap into it on like a weekly basis. But it's only pretend, you know? I, it's like therapy. So it's all a lie. <laughs> Monica and David, the first day, the first shot, I had to drag them onto the set because their marks were here. They were in another room laughing hysterically and joking and doing musical theater together. And I just went, okay, this is either going to work really great or it's going to be a problem because they're going to come off as they like each other too much. This is no ordinary blood. Yeah. It almost seems please, to please, shine. <laughs> okay, so then... I remember my AD came up to me and said, you know, this is going to be a problem. I mean, these guys are like, they're goofing off, and we've got to roll. And I said, then just say roll. And we would say roll, the slate would go up, the slate would hit, and they would both stop, and uh, bam, they'd be right there. Here we go. We have a very similar work ethic, which worked. I mean, it would be one thing if... One of us was goofing out and the other one had to focus and I had a very different work ethic, but luckily we're, we're very similar in the fact that we can be joking around and being goofy and silly and then immediately focus and, and do a hysterical crying fighting scene. 